so real quick, you listen to the episode. I want you to reach to the nearest tape measure and pull it out. That's right. This is Sawdust Nation Podcast episode 102. Josh from North Country Woodworking talking. Oh, wow. Yeah, 202. Uh, he's, he's he's behind the time, folks. He's focused did you, on did you time more like back to the It time. feels like that. <laughs> it was only yesterday it was 102. Anyway, well, you know, you're in 100 so long. <laughs> Anywho, I'm Josh from North Country Woodworking, and we have Matt from Naps Nighty Works LLC, Tim from Gears and Fire, and my favorite <sighs> friend Buffalo Trace. I mean, what? <laughs> Not sponsored. <laughs> if you can pour a glass, if you can't, that's okay. We'll have a little sip for you. Anywho, we got an episode for you. Everyone has their drinks ready, clearing off our benches of sawdust, and uh, talking about sawdust, Tim. What are you doing in your shop? What aren't I doing? It seems like I'm doing everything to support the making of repeatable cribbage boards and not other products. I have three other products in the queue and I'm still hammering away at like making these guys more repeatable. But that's okay. Because like I said, I keep getting orders, so obviously I'm doing something right. <laughs> You're dialed crazy, in, so. man. It's it's real close. So one thing that uh, I kind of had to go back to my original career when I was working at um, a production welding facility is the whole concept of fixtures. And I'm not talking like just a board with a clamp on it. I'm talking about repeatable, same location every time fixtures. So when I am setting these guys up, I know that, you know, the stock wood is supposed to be X long by X wide. But I need to put them in something other than just stop blocks. So what I created um, was basically called what I call a fixture plate. And it's basically, since I know that my spoil board isn't as even as it needs to be, I just created, I, I bolted a plate to it. And then I machined two pockets into it that I, and that tells me that those two pockets are flat in relation to the gantry. So I know that every single time that I put these in there, every time I clamp it down, it's always going to be the same X, the same Y, and the same Z when I zero it out. And that has absolutely created a ton of value for me because my cuts look a lot better. Um, even like I said, the quality after the fact, everything is just better. It's more accurate. And I'm kind of kicking myself for not doing it sooner. You know what I mean? But uh, I remember the first six boards that I did. Remember I was kind of complaining about how I was getting fuzz inside the V-bit? Yeah. Tool pass. Um, I have a feeling that, like, the guy that sold me hard maple wasn't hard maple because even – I don't know what was going on because this time I used ash and it cut beautifully. Like, I'm not getting the fuzz at all. So I have a feeling, like, that V-bit is not really meant for doing – this type of work on soft woods, I guess. I don't know. I guess I'm still waiting for feedback from uh, YouTube, but like feed and speed and depth of cut regarding oh, the, the, downtown, the, the downtown Jenny. But I like I said, I'm, get, I'm getting a little closer because this, this looks better. You know what I mean? Like it's overall, I mean, the, the lines are thicker. It's more steady, but I don't know. It does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but in the uh, spirit of continuing evolution of perfection, I'm still going to keep trying new things. But so I do batches of these at six at a time. So the next six that I do, I'm probably just going to tweak just a few minor things, but only one or two at a time. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. And so in addition to these guys, I have another um, one of the round ones that I'm working on for uh, Ed because he was one of the winners in our 200th giveaway. So I, I got the slab for that guy um, all blocked up right now, and I'm about to um, start doing some cuts after we get off this here podcast. <laughs> pretty excited about that. <laughs> it's a beautiful slab. Actually, I could probably show you this. Um, it's a, another chunk of silver maple. Oh, did um, Ed, did Ed get with you uh, with uh, that? Yep, he, he, okay. he sent me a graphics. So it's this guy right there that it's coming out of. It's got it's got some really cool figure in that guy. But 
I'm pretty excited because I, I mean, every time I do those large uh, round ones, it kind of, it's another chance for me to kind of perfect the operation. Me and too. this time around too, and, th- and, this, and this time around too, it's like, um, it's going to be another repeatable product, like my folding cribbage board. So, yeah, so I can kind of add into the, uh, um, the quick and dirty, as I call it. So like the, the stuff, the products that I can spit out quickly, not necessarily like a full on furniture project, right? So this is just like the repeatable product facet of Gears and Fire. Building that up little by little as much as I can anyway. I don't know if you guys have anything like that, like the super repeatable stuff. Um, I wish. I mean, I, I do uh, kind of like I have a friend of mine that's in uh, PA station in uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, I made a crack deal with him basically for really cheap plaques. And he'll send me the design and layout. The only thing I do is put it on a pre-made design, cut it on the CNC, and then laser engrave it. I literally do nothing other than copy and paste information. And it's a plaque I can knock out fairly quickly. I, I can, you know, send it the same day type deal. And, uh, you know, once in a while he reaches out. I do it again and it's just he gets you know a good looking plaque fairly cheap and you know i get to knock out a quick plaque and get some cash but um i i I don't don't know if that's exactly what you're doing it's uh, i wouldn't say it's on the same level but it's there i think it's in a sense it's the same thing yeah yeah because like i mean it's like i said it's it's the base product that you're repeating but like for the example, like if I ever want to put, you know, like the, the customer's business name on the end of this, that's like the custom part of it, right? Yeah. But it's the stuff that's not the stuff that's not custom, the stuff that you can churn out quickly. That's more or less what I'm looking at. I guess I'm kind of curious, like, what other people are doing along those same lines. But I tell you what, if I had a laser, I would be burning the filigree in and I wouldn't be using the CNC because this just like picking off the yeah. horror mask is an absolute pain. Even if fun. you just go get a diode to get you going and having that operate separately, that would still was, get you somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You don't. Okay. I, I we'll, we'll get right back into your thing, but I'll make this caveat because I think sometimes we have, we all forget we don't need the biggest, baddest thing out there. We don't need the you know best equipment. Sometimes we have to start but, at a lower level. He didn't mean it now. He didn't mean it now. <laughs> I'll put Nap on mute so that, he can cry this out. Um, when you have all the fu money in the world, you know you just buy what you want, and you know, and you might use it. Once I'm sure we all know, that, you know someone like but, that. But, but I, to that point, though, um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you guys have seen. Um, <laughs> oh, he's there. <laughs> um, right I'm now, woodpeckers. Uh, you know the little woodpecker or whatever. Like normally it's like a thousand bucks. Right now it's on sale yep. for like thirty percent off. It's like seven hundred bucks. That is a screaming deal. That still takes a that still takes a part of my soul, regardless. Hey, you know what? I can't throw it down for a big ass freaking you know fancy pants laser like you boys can. So okay, I first get... of all, my laser is far <laughs> from fancy, sir. Mine is one hundred percent grade A chinesium. I took a loan now. I did a, a firm or one of those when I bought it, and I did, firm, yeah. yeah, I made payments on it. So I did not buy that straight out. <laughs> I wish I I'm, I'm considering it, but like honestly, you know, the, the fancy pants laser. If it, let's put it this way: if it takes up a footprint on the floor, it's a fancy pants laser. If you could put it in a cabinet, it's not a fancy pants laser. <laughs> Well, definitely look at. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, we used to we used to be sponsored by them. And it's not you know we're we're not, it's not we're not sponsored anymore. Not for anything bad or anything. We just we just couldn't uh, reach out or, get, or whatever the case may be. But uh, J Tech has great dial lasers. Like especially he's got that 44 yeah. watt now. See, I, um, I have nothing against J Tech, but like something that ties up your machine. That's okay. Yes, I I see your point there. Yeah. Um, but but in Tim's case, okay. If he batches out a bunch of those boards, right, yep. then he can go and then he can switch his operation, you know, so he can cut True. 10 boards and then go 10 laser boards. And while the boards are lasering, he can clean up his shop, he can do something else in there, whatever, while he's waiting, 
and run it that way. That's how I do it anyways, when, or when, how I did it, I should say, uh, when I had my diode. No, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm that's just how, saying that's how I think because I could, I could continue carving whatever and then have the laser going nonstop. I mean, either way you do it, you still achieve similar results. But um, I don't know, man. I, if, I was in, if I were in your shoes and I was looking to buy a big laser later on, get that small one in the meantime. I mean, like, oh, people are selling them all the time. I actually look – I would look for someone that just bought – like Omtech or whatever, and they had a dial laser, and then I'd be like, "Hey, actually, <laughs> that's actually give me a hundred bucks." <laughs> I sold mine for like that. My old one, I sold it to a gentleman getting into woodworking that wanted a laser. I had it for years. I said, "Hey, you're gonna probably have to replace the diode at some point in time, but it still works. A like hundred bucks, it's yours. I'll show you how it works. You buy a light burner, and I'll show you how to operate." Guy, as far as I know, is running the same thing. To this day. Right. But I'll tell you what I wish I had for this, though. It was the uh, ATC from uh, PWN CNC. Because, like, I'm, I'm looking at four bits that is required to get these. Oh, wow. Four? Done. Yep. So, V-bit drill, quarter inch up and quarter inch down. The four-bit theory? The four-bit theory. I love it. I just <laughs> have to take it out of the fixture, flip it, and... Start the next tool path, but even then, if I could reduce everything down to just two tool paths, why not? Right? I don't, I wouldn't have to zero it. <laughs> You're right, absolutely. Ducky loves my mood lighting, he likes my RGB I got going on. I'm in my, I'm in my room, or I call it the gaming room now. It's my office, but nerd. Um, dude, I'm gonna tell you something. You know what? He's I'll wait his, to tell you something. He's in his fungin, leave him alone. <laughs> I got my fungin, I got my, I got my east wing hammer. <laughs> I like the cold I'll tell steel. you why this is in here as well. <laughs> Were you pounding something? Uh, actually, I was, but it was more of a tapping, more not not a swinging. I had to use left-handed anger uh, on, on it. So. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, Tim. So We're going down a rabbit hole. Just like I was just wondering if the hammers for like uh, um, calibration encouragement. <laughs> calibration. Encouragement. Uh, it's it's a uh, concussive maintenance, sir, or per- concussive, concussive maintenance. maintenance. It depends yeah. where you're from. It depends on what you're doing. I mean, concussive maintenance, <laughs> percussive maintenance. Man, it's funny what? you say that. My first base, I was a maintainer, right? So I worked on AWAX, and they gave me a nice, you know, like AWAX, you know, mini- miniature. But on the plaque, it says, um, grab a crowbar, I think it was, and a rag and call it good. Because, like, I just grab random tools because I knew, like, what was wrong half the time. So I just grabbed the one tool and a rag go out there and fix it and like i was known for grabbing that one tool and be able to do that so i mean you having the hammer in there just kind of had a flashback it's good it, file. it fixes about 85 percent of my yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like i said i mean it's also good for measuring if you need to like move your piece over just a scooch to take a little bit off the top i don't move it i find something solid and i tap it over until it is accurate Tap it in. Tap it in. Ducky, it is um, just pure Buffalo Trace bourbon, my friend. It's going straight to the source. Yeah, I've been drinking. I drink my bourbon straight most of the time, unless I'm feeling uh, extra and I want to throw a dash of Coke, but I won't do it to Buffalo Trace. But anyways. um, But yeah, that's good, Tim. So you're going to get a diode win? (laughs) Uh, Next week, maybe. I don't know. I'm kidding. But, well, if you get a diode, let me know because uh, you know I used to have the exact machine you have, and I have set up a dial laser on it. So if you do, I can help uh, you. Okay, because like honestly, anything to build capability is something. But I'm still feeding my thermometer to get my CETA solvers. It's on its way. Okay. I'm in the four. I'm in the four figure range. There you go. And honestly, with that being said. Like adding something to make the process a little easier on you is going to make it worth your while. Yeah, because I mean, there's like I could think of a million tools that would help me do this better, but I also know that my my process that I have so far has been is I want to say it's like ninety percent proved out. Yeah, right? you, you also don't want to you know hurt your wallet too bad because the whole point of doing something like that is to make a profit with what you have currently. But I will say. I have seen you woodworking 
you know, go from one direction to another and the different things you've done. And I think, you know, I'm not trying to talk into a laser, but I am. Um, any type of laser that you get, I, you're going to do amazing things with. I mean, just look at what you've done with that CNC. Um, having that little bit of capability, and I say a little bit because I'm underselling it, um, will definitely help you reach different different capabilities. I say capabilities because I've seen you take something and create a process out of nothing. And I don't want to limit you, limit you by saying just lasering and engraving. Like I said, I, I fully know the capabilities of a good laser. Cause I mean, both of my previous employers, yeah, we had lasers, yeah. like I was making really, really fancy pants stuff on those, which that only ignites my fire more. Right. <laughs> when you get to use the, you know, the big boy toys and all of a sudden you go back to an environment when you don't have one. It sucks. I can imagine. So it's, it's all in my future. It has to, be. I can't not have it. <laughs> Well, that's pretty cool, dude. But I'm gonna say a 3D printer is on the works too. But I mean, it's which which one first, right? I mean, I know that I very nice. I was looking at that. I noticed that. But like, um, I feel like I can make money quicker with a 3D printer just because of what I can do with it. But that's after I get my seat of SolidWorks. Oh well, yeah, I mean, one step at that's, a time the theory anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I think all three of us for the most part, you know, we're at the point, at least I am, I'll speak for myself here is like, I have the tools I, I, I need, you know, are there tools that can make a little life easier? Yeah, sure. Um, do I need them to make, you know, different stuff? I have enough tools where I'm still learning capability. I mean, like, I think I'm set for a while. I, you know, I'm, even with the longest big tool I have, the CNC, right? I'm still learning things on that. Uh, different programs have changed yep. different ways I can utilize that. And it's just a program. So, I mean, yeah, that's a good point. It's, it's amazing. You change one variable in your process or one variable in like your machining and you have a whole different set of uh, tools in your tool bag. So, yeah, like I said, I mean, I know, I have no idea that I've hit some walls with equipment, but I can see lots of openings in other spots. In other words, I haven't completely outgrown my shop or stuff just yet. <laughs> that engineering aspect of designing slash, you know, making has always um, been a big part of woodworking for myself. I know for you too, Tim, and I would even say Nap as well. Um, I know Nap and I talked about this a little bit. Um for me, and I talked to my father actually um, this weekend about it. I mean, I love puzzles. And when I say puzzles, I mean like the 3D puzzles that, you know, you, they have a key you need to get out and whatever. Um, growing up, my grandfather, what he would do is he'd get these wooden puzzles and puzzles such as that, and he'd hand it to us. And like being the stubborn fool I am, I would sit there until I get it. And then I'd get it off or get it out and be like, oh, I have to put it back together. And then I figure out how to put it together. And then you do it over and over until basically you, you mastered it or to a point where you know it for that day. And then you put it down, maybe come back to it and have to kind of work at it some more. Woodworking has been that um, outlet for me where I can take a, a project and basically develop a process or develop a way of creating something. Um, and like I had a project like that this weekend. So I'll get into that a little later. I, I wanted to, before I turn it over, uh, Tim, you got anything else going in your shop that you want to talk about, Wood? Other than fixturing, repeating, and cribbage boards, not a ton. Um, I know that as soon as this cribbage board is done, I am ripping Betty apart, new spoil board, undoing connections, and basically wiping everything down based on giving her a full work over. I've had her for three three years, three three plus years, and she needs some TLC. That's about it. <laughs> a little bit of loving. Yeah, that's right. Late night oil. Mm -hmm. so. I've got a friend. Her name is Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Are you cool? What's going on in your shop, Doctor Evil? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. me? Uh, On a hot uh, pocket? That, that's, a, that's a keeper. Mm. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, what do I got going on in the shop? 
I don't even know. Like I'm getting so old and geriatric. These You're days. the youngest one yeah, here. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, so joke at work is so because I'm you know on the mass sergeant and the rest of them are not mass sergeants and they all joke and they go nap your liver spotted geriatric hands. I'm like leave me alone. All right, there's only one <laughs> liver spot. Okay, working um, on the others. <laughs> but no, so yeah, but uh, no, a lot going on in the shop. Um, it's funny, you know, you see money come in and then you spend more money and it hurts the soul. Um, because you know that you need to buy material to make the money and, you know, so, you know, all these things. So you think like, oh yeah, I'm doing great. And then you spend the money, you're like, shit, I'm only making half of that back in profit, which, okay, it's still pretty good, but you know, it's still like, damn, this sucks. Uh, but anyways, so I'm making, um, 22 by 22, uh, cherry sign with some uh, acrylic on it. I don't think I'm going to use 3M this time around, though. I think I'm going to use some uh, some kind of like acrylic weld or something like that because I'm going to weld it to the wood. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't mind 3M. 3M works great, okay? But so for certain You're for talking certain about like adhesive, adhesive to glue yeah. something to the wood. To the wood, I'm not so sure. The stuff that I've been practicing with is it melts the essential acrylic together on the sign. I mean, I probably still use that, but um, I'll do some testing or something. But I'm not painting this acrylic. I actually bought the colors of acrylic this time around, uh, just because um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't feel like painting the back of acrylic this time around. I just don't. I don't want to. <laughs> um, but I found all the colors I needed, and uh, I bought them all. They're actually they all just got here today. In fact. I'm going to use a was it, quarter inch piece of black um, black acrylic, cut out the outline, and then put quarter inch or uh, was it eighth inch pieces uh, in the spaces. So I, I, I got to ask, why don't you want to use the 3M? Is it because of the price? Is it because of what? Uh, uh, just me and 3 me something different, but me and 3M, we've uh, we fought recently. Um. No, I don't know. I just want to see if there's anything else out there. Like, I'll keep using 3M. You know, like, it's not a bad product. Like, it, it does what it's supposed to do. Um, but I can tell you that if I can find something where I can just, like, spray it or brush it on the back of the acrylic and stick it, to me, that's a little bit faster and takes kind of a step out of my process that I don't necessarily always like doing. And also, by the way, peeling that stuff off of the 3M is a pain in the rear, especially when it's the outline. And you're pulling it, and there's like little skinny pieces, and it rips, and you're like, "Well, now I got to start over." And then also, it messes with my OCD because I love to try to peel it off in one one piece, and it doesn't come off in one piece. Uh, the whole steps not. Exactly. I feel like there's a lot to unpack <laughs> here. Is- uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go get some more to drink. I'm here. Yeah, you know the sa- the satisfaction behind pulling off adhesive or like anything in one foul swoop is uh, is so satisfying. Like. I don't know if you guys have done this. I've done it just because for for I kicks tried and when I when I pull the aura mask off of this. You know exactly what we're talking goes, about, then, Tim. Ooh. <laughs> oh, look at lady. Lady, <laughs> she can't hear you, oh, girl. I know. Uh, I don't, she's like, "What's going on out there?" Dogs can hear. Yeah. I guarantee you, they can hear. Yeah. But um, but no. So I've uh, I had a a bottle of Type Bond three, and it was a it was one of the gallon bottles, and it was like three quarters of the way gone but there was like uh, a little skin on the inside of it and i started peeling it i was like <laughs> oh, I, to keep her. I, I when i when i tell you i i i broke out the new glue bot to oh. use the rest of the glue just so i could cut that thing open I gotta, I gotta order that. uh and josh says you gotta order something uh i have a baby glue bot the baby glue bots that it's a baby it's baby glue bot maybe mini i thought it was baby but it's like the size of this glass Maybe it's smaller. The little guy. And uh, yeah, the little guy works great for really tight spaces. Uh, the trunk, in fact, when I was doing the corner molding, instead of using the big glue bot that leaves this big bead of glue, I was able to use baby glue bot and leave little beads of glue, and I had no seepage. So uh, I, Josh was like, You have a baby glue bot? I was like, Yeah, it's the best thing ever. It's I tiny, it's buying, like it fits in my hand. Is that the one too big for your hand, man? Twice and not understand. <laughs> What, what, Tim? I, I, I was saying, I just remember buying the glue bot and using it twice and not understanding the point of it. 
listen, I know, I'm, I love I'm Liberty deflecting. Bell. I'm deflecting for you, so we can ignore I, this guy. I see, I see what you're doing right now, and because uh, Josh, Josh is a child. Um, but, uh, but anyways, back to what I was talking about. So, anyways, I peel all the glue off the inside of this Type Bond Three container, and let me tell you, when I say oh, yeah. that it's satisfying, I now understand why people make glue videos on Instagram for as annoying as they may be and how many views and likes they get. Uh, but they're very satisfying. Anyways, I digress. Uh, so I made, I'm gonna make that sign. I finally have the acrylic to finish this stupid coin rack uh, that I still have sitting behind. By the way, it's behind me, actually. So <laughs> over yonder, you can't really see. It's just peering above that box there. Uh, literally, just got to cut this out. Put Mister um, Little Sparky together. I guess what the character's name is or something, and send it on its way. I'm ready to get it out of my house. Um, and then I have two, three projects that i'm excited to make uh, one of which is my mass sergeant chevron box uh, a few episodes ago well maybe like five or six i talked about how i accidentally cut the wrong file uh, for shadow box but instead i went ahead and doubled up on my order and i went ahead and made you know the, the box for it essentially and whoever wanted a shadow box next i already have it like halfway made so someone did buy that so it's sitting on my top shelf i need to put it together this weekend um, and then I have a that Coast Guard shadow box that I finally get to start. And then another one that I get to do that I've talked about a little bit, not even really that much because I wasn't 100% sure if it was a job that was going to stick, to be honest, because I gave him the price and he really didn't say like yes or no. And then we talked about the stuff that he's putting in it. I was like, hey, bring me your stuff. And then he brought me his stuff and it was like, okay, this guy wants it. So I have a 40 inch by 11 inch piece of stock sitting on my CNC table right now. Roughly an inch thick. Uh, that is going to be the a badge that I'm going to be putting on this uh, the shadow box. Um, there's a lot to unpack, as Josh would say, uh, in this particular project. The only piece of this that I'm little concerned about is the lights. Uh, I'm still figuring out which way I want to go with that. Uh, I have an idea. Like, it's just some, lights shining from the side or towards the back, something like from that. inside of it. Yeah. Okay. So the lights will be inside so to light up the actual inside of the box. Nice. Um, I have an idea what I'm going to do. I'm just concerned because I haven't put lights inside of a shadow box before. And I'm not going to do what I've seen some folks do is just take the, you know, the, the sticky stuff off the back and stick it to the wood because that's just no I offense to anybody that. who's done that. Nope. To me, that that's, doesn't work. <laughs> that's garbaggio to me. Uh, you, you need to actually like put a, you know, a piece of U channel in there with a diffuser. Uh, and stuff like that and make it look really nice. Um, uh, but more to come on that one. You'll see some Instagram stuff on that. I paused on the Instagram for a minute just because life got busy again. And uh, Instagram is not my life. So there's that. So I have three shadow boxes. The chief's chest went away. He paid me for it and he loved it. I'm waiting to get pictures of it filled up, which would be cool. I got a couple random jobs. Uh, there is one job I got that I don't necessarily want to do because I know who it's for and I don't necessarily like that person. Um, but then again, money is money. So I'll do it for the dollar. Um, uh, it's just one of those things. 20 bucks um, is 20 bucks. I, pretty much. It's kind of what it is. <laughs> but also the person asking to have it made is, you know, the spouse of one of my friends. So it's like, it's like one of those like weird situations where it's like, I don't want to be a dick to you. I don't like this person that you're friends with, but cool, whatever. Anyways, I did conflict. that again, but yeah, conflict, <laughs> but I'll do it just because, you know, of my buddy. Uh, then I got two more going away that I have to have done by Friday. I got hit with them yesterday. That's fine. 70 bucks a piece. Easy 140. Call it a day. Um, so that's really it as far as what I'm making. Oh, I have 200 coasters to make too. I'm not looking for that shit. 200 coasters. But Three, no, I remember you saying that most of that's laser work though, isn't it? Yep, yeah, but it's going to be the milling, the 200 four by four quarter inch thick coasters. <laughs> and then, and then because I'm not, a, I'm not basic, I'm going to put a small round over on all the edges. <laughs> Holy mother of God. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hate what, yourself? Josh? Top and bottom round over. What's that, Tim? Top and like round over on top and bottom. I'm debating. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's 204 little circles. 
or 408. <laughs> Well, right, you on. said you said two hundred and four. It's gonna, right? it's it's uh, actually eight hundred sides, sir. Uh, and if I do both, it's sixteen hundred sides. So I'm pretty excited. Oh my god! Yeah, I hate myself. <laughs> Clearly. Um, so I got that, but that's due by May seventeenth. I'll start that next week. Uh, I'll probably do like twenty a day or something like that, just to break it down. Uh, it's a lot more manageable when you can do something, you know, like that. As long as I start by the seventh, and toward the end, he's going to be like, Drink "I waited to the last minute, had to do all of them at the same time." Absolutely, f and not. I'm trying to get these done, in, uh, just so I don't have to look at them. Uh, I'm probably going to be doing the induction ceremony awards again this year for for the senior and CEO stuff. So that's a roughly another good chunk job. I don't. I want to do it, but I ain't gonna lie to you guys. Some of that production stuff just bothers me. <laughs> gets annoying um but either way anyways um i'm doing other stuff in the shop doing some video stuff for pw and cnc also learning how to rebuild spindles and things like that uh, i am able to take a spindle apart in roughly 10 minutes now it's not hard at all Blindfolded. Um, honestly if i didn't if i didn't have to heat the collar on the bottom one and I didn't have to use a pair of I call the Big Bertha channel locks. I probably could do it blindfolded, but no, nice. not blindfolded. <laughs> um, I'm working on how to keep a spindle from screaming on startup. So it uh, and it's not a squeak; it's it's a scream. Like it sounds like an F15 is taken off in my shop when I started it. Um, I was like, "There's something wrong with that. That's not right." So um, I got to retake this other one apart because I put the new bearings in. I don't think I greased them properly, so I think that might be part of the reason why there's noise. Uh, so I'll find out here probably this weekend when I rip into another one. But I'll show that. That's all I got going on in the shop. I talked a lot. I'm testy. So Josh, Toasty. buddy, you've made some cool stuff this weekend. Yeah, I got to get in the workshop, touch some wood. Um, you know, work it. Um, so yeah, I got in the shop this weekend and uh, had to knock out some uh, some projects. I got to ship those out. That's the current reason why I, well, I'm not going to lie. Um, so let's hit on this first. Anyone that wanted a mallet, I plan on shipping your mallet out. Um, I haven't got to it because you need to buy boxes and I just have to do the labels and get those out to you. So thank you for being patient. Second is before I get into all the crazy stuff in the shop, I have a pyramid over here. It's a pyramid that turns. It's so pretty. She spins around. Hey, she Josh. Am. How would you say you made that do that? <laughs> so, um, Nap was my sounding board for this because I was essentially trying to come up with a wood feature way to go ahead and create this spinning action that you see behind me um i've i went from using a dowel on the bottom piece and a little bit of you know, lube and give it some spinning action to uh maybe a dowel to all the pieces and the top and the bottom and just be like a pole in the center and spin around the pole um he suggested a bearing but unfortunately i know i have bearings somewhere well i just don't know where those are um so this took probably longer than it should have because like the main item was basically done you know within four hours or so um because i cut out all the pieces <laughs> i cut all the pieces on the cnc yes that's a little bit lazy but it worked really well because i was able to do the coin slots at the same time and then i actually 3d printed wonder woman on my resin printer because that's the best detailed and then i spray painted this with nice. um like a bronze and like it came out, it looks like metal. Like my son came down and goes, How'd you make metal? And I'm like, Bingo, I win. You know, when when a child <laughs> is telling you that it looks like metal, you know it's resin printers are awesome. There's a mighty fine, it's a mighty fine detail in it. And she does go right round, baby, right round. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> Literally. Uh, so yeah, you know, we're racking our brains on how we're gonna spin this and we were talking about different ways he's done it and you know, the ways we could I could do it. And then I, I just had a thought. I sat down after being in the shop all day. I'm like, maybe there's a there's another way. I went to uh, Home Depot and I picked up. It's not a turntable. What's it called? Lazy Susan Hardware. And I went and I carved a little uh, relief in there to narrow the gap because it's like a 516 gap. So I got it down to probably like 
less than a quarter inch, probably a little bit less. And then, um, yeah, definitely less than a quarter inch. But uh, long story short, and then uh, I, you know, installed it, epoxy glued it down so I can go ahead and get everything nice and secure. And now it spins around just fine. I have basically everything glued together. But the reason why I haven't sent it out is because I'm terrified that this top piece right here is going to break off during shipping because the rest of the piece is pretty solid. So this is this is what I have so far. I'm going to use 3M. I'm going to cut a circle and, and have it underneath that piece. I'm going to ship it so that the, the uh, Wonder Woman piece is in a small box. And then this is in a, a bigger box and they're packaged together. They get it. They peel it. They stick it. Bada bing, bada boom. Guess what? They have their piece. What I don't like is like, I think 3M is a maker secret. Like a lot of people don't realize that we have essentially a sticker that will adhere to wood and make things really cool. I wish there was a better way, but I, well, it's like, how big is that bottom of Wonder Woman? <laughs> how big is Wonder Woman's bottom? That, like, is there enough to get like a, well, um, if the square like a, root of a, like, a, is there enough to like, is there enough to like stuff a so quarter inch doll? It's hollow on the side, and I, I thought about that as well. Um, but when I, I glued. <laughs> I glued. I did that on on purpose for a nap. He's he's checked out. Continue. And I'm pin nailed out. the pieces <laughs> together. That way, they just the pin nails was holding it. That way, I can go manipulate it. And <laughs> the where I pin nailed the top piece down is where she's going to sit. So if I drill anything, it's going to go right through those pin nails, and it's just poor last minute design feature. Uh, anyway, oh, okay. the 3M will work just fine. It's just one of those things where, like, I don't want to have them feel cheated or feel like it's cheap by sticking that on. Hey, there's some assembly required. It's all right. It's not like they're going to be moving it around a ton other than spinning it. I have to engrave, like, a, one little name on the top, and then they, they'll be able to align it. I'll make an X, like, uh, the whole nine yards. I'll make it as simple as possible. Just just let them, just, just let you, just let them know, like. That and then honestly, and this is another secret for your your stuff there, Josh. So 3M works really well. We, we all know it does, but you know it is an adhesive sticker. Uh, so what I do for stuff like that, I'll actually take the 3M, throw it on my laser, cut my circle, cut a small circle in the center, stick it, and you send a small tube of super glue. So what they'll do is they'll peel it, glue the center where there's no stick, stick it down, and that, that it's never coming up unless you like take a hammer to it, which I hope that would. And that should be a fine fix for it. Um, made a plaque too that's due in June. Obviously, did some acrylic work with that. Um, so I'll be sending that out with all the mallets and everything here. My plan was to do it uh, when I'm editing the podcast after after we record here. Um, but we'll see how that works out. I'm pretty pretty tired, but uh, yeah. So I got this this stuff knocked out. I still have the two uh, big projects that are in the shop, which is the clock and uh, shadow box. Um, kind of ran into i opened the box for the shadow box and they gave me too much stuff well let me rephrase that they gave me a full-size flag which i was not thinking they were going to give me a certificate for the flag which i didn't know about and then they gave me a couple other details i wasn't aware of so i'm gonna have to figure that out um the shadow box i've been putting off because of the epoxy um i don't want to mess that up so epoxy. not the shadow box, but the clock, the clock. I've been putting that off because of the epoxy. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I was like, but I should be able to get to those hopefully this weekend and at least get done with the shadow box and start the epoxy. Um, I'm pretty square up when it comes to my orders. When it, I have inquiries, but that leads me to kind of like uh, not big news, news, I guess. So. I know I've talked about it, kind of hinted at it before, but I am moving the shop to probably 90% uh, on hand stuff that I make and then sell and then 10% custom. Um, plaques always would be that custom part. I can knock out a plaque pretty fairly easy, even the design work. A um, little bit of the shadow box. Is that going to be that? Like, I, I'm guessing shadow boxes is going to be that like 10% because people like getting creative with those or maybe a chest or something like that. But I, I kind of, I'm thinking over my head, um, my life has gotten a little bit busier than uh, I really thought it would be moving and um, a couple different things. 
And I want to kind of ensure I have enough work life balance between work, work, shop life, and, you know, private. And this way I can honestly do things. I, I can just be like, hey, you know what? I want to make this is just me spitballing a Star Wars sign. And I can put that up for sale and see how that sells. Or I can be like, I really want to try this, but I never had a project I could try it with. I'm going to go ahead and try this and see if that sells. Um, so we're going to have a whole bunch of products and not be able to sell them. But, you know, <laughs> I'm going to try. That's, I feel that. I'm sitting on like a dozen. So I will be doing shadow boxes. Um, I'll probably do a couple of Master Sergeant, the same ones I use. I, I make a lot of those anyway. So I'll have those sitting, waiting. Um, and then I'll have a couple of generic ones where like, if you know, if you've ever seen the Air Force Chevron for enlisted for like a senior enlisted, I'll have the outline of that. So I can literally go from a chief to a master and it would be the same thing. And I'll probably do something for like the NCO, a couple of, you know, for that way that you can't really tell it's in the shape of, and then I can kind of hand that out generic stuff where I can kind of multi-purpose it. Um, you know, coin racks. I thought this was going to be pretty tough, but I think I'm just going to add that up there too. Cause I got the files. I know how to do it. I can, as long as I got the, the with board, I can knock it out fairly fast. Um, so I, I think that's going to be the smartest move for me now. Now, would that be forever? No, I definitely would like to get back in the custom stuff a little bit, you know, down the road, but, uh, until things settle down, I think it's the best way moving forward for myself. Um, gets me making because I know when I have time, I can just go, I can go make, I'm not worried about certain things. Um, and then I'm not, I don't have due dates, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have what I have and I, that's it. So, and then I can have that 10% being the, you know, the creative side and not be pressured on the date. Um, cause I'm not gonna lie. Due dates stress me out. Like they're always in the back of my mind and I could be like sitting here talking and I, I know I have due dates and I have to meet those. Um, so I don't want to have too many of those so I can, you know, have my attention to my kids and my work and, and all the stuff where it should be essentially. Um, I'm doing a little bit more air force stuff that I have in the past. Um, I don't really have a good reason for it other than like, you know, I kind of reevaluated where I was at and kind of want to do more. Um, and that's taking up some time as well. So, um, I'm just kind of getting after it in all different aspects. That's one of the reasons why if you follow me on Instagram, I probably have a posted. I don't even know how long now. Um, I have pictures and reels I have made. I just haven't posted them. Um, I am just not feeling it at the moment. And I, I always told myself and I nap and I have talked about this and I think even Tim and I, it's not imperative. I'm hoping that you continue to follow my, you know, my journey when not. And I will post again when I get into that rhythm. I like what you post because it's meaningful stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not, it's not these people that, you know, like do these weird glue peeling or whatever. I don't know. I'll just, I'll I'll just go show my Instagram down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just one of those things where I've, I've kind of hit at this before. I like to be more uh, informative in my uh, Instagram postings. And, like, I don't mind showing, like, you know, fancy ways of showing an end product or the process of. Um, those are fun, too. But I think there should be a little bit of a balance. Um, and if I'm going to do justice to that, I need to take time to, you know, rework how I want to go ahead and reach out to people. So, yeah, it's a little bit different. You know, than the past how many years we've been doing this for, but um, sometimes change is good, and sometimes it's healthy, and sometimes it's the best way for moving forward because you can't stay the same way and expect to grow. Um, you have to challenge yourself. And then you get complacent. And custom pieces, you don't necessarily get complacent, but it's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. It's a time suck. Like honestly, like I could design things very fast, but like sometimes you suck yourself out like this piece back here. Like I didn't know how I was going to build that. I knew I could in some way in theory, but once I got it down and got the files, I'm like, Oh wait, that's pretty easy. Yeah. I mean, you figured out a cool way to execute that too. Like using lazy Susan hardware, 
That's awesome. I use Nap as a sounding board and Tim as well, because like for me, I know that I might have a good idea or the good idea fairy, as they sometimes say. Um, but sometimes having that, you know, sounding board essentially allows you to be like, that's not a good idea. <laughs> that's going to fail. There's that. I actually bought two Lazy Susan uh, pieces of hardware so I can make another one of those. I was going to ask you, how much is like a Lazy Susan hardware? Kit? Five bucks. Okay. Six by six inch piece that holds 400 pounds. And yeah, like I did, like I did expect the 400 pounds. Yeah. Over engineered much. So we do that. No, over engineering is under, undervalued. You know what? (laughs) You did great. What they had. But anyway, yeah, it worked out well. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, It's the maples is just beautiful on there. Um, so when the light hits it just right, it shines. Yeah. So I'm pretty proud of that project. I'm really proud of the 3d print because like, I, you know how it is. Like you find a print and you're like, Oh, this is going to turn out great. And it's, I, I went and I printed it and it just, there was no issues with it. I didn't have to modify it. I just clipped the supports. I, you know, it dried, you know, it was hardened. I was able to paint it fairly quickly, bought some pretty good spray paint and it, Looks like a bronze statue. So sometimes it may be like, good. Yeah, exactly. You're not shit. wrong. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was nice to get in the shop. It's nice to get things done. I kind of was in there and I was thinking about how I want to move forward with everything. Uh, I didn't come to those decisions lightly. It was one of those things where I like the custom pieces. Like I said, I like puzzles. But now I can start creating the kind of puzzles I want to create too. And like, really determining and kind of doing what Tim's doing uh, just in a different way of, you know, kind of narrowing. I, I'll know what supplies I need. I'll know, you know, what I can get um, and kind of really taking the business in that direction and allow myself a little more time when I want it. So here's a question for you. And this is somewhere between production and custom. So we are going through all of our kids, or we will be going through all of our kids' um, board games and stuff like that. A lot of the board games are yeah. missing pieces and parts. Things are falling apart, you know, that type of thing. So that got me thinking, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm making these cribbage boards to sell at a game store. Like, can I make, like, a custom wooden sorry kit that, obviously, I can't sell it under the sorry name, right? You know, trademarks and all that stuff, but could I sell, like, you know, a Call it apologetic. Call it a common game piece kit. So sorry, apologetic. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. I, I'm going to run with that. I'll, <laughs> I'll give full credit to you. <laughs> but I mean, like, there's so many, there's so many games that have like lots of really cool pieces and parts. Like, how could I effectively make game kits that could be sold without like tripping those things? And so, like. And kind of thinking through this process, like I was immediately drawn to the mousetrap game. Back in the day, mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys remember the mousetrap. Have you guys had it, played it? So back in the day when I was a kid, like that game was actually legit. So like you go buy a mousetrap <laughs> from legit? like. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. I'm talking like the quality of the game, the pieces and stuff oh, like that. Oh, like no. it is crap. Like they figured out exactly how to take out every nickel and dime out of that game just to mass produce what it is now. See, back in the day, all those pieces were legit. Like, it actually functioned. Well, for me, it did, because, well, I, that's who I am. But, so how do I make a better mousetrap? <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually asking that question. Like, how do I make a better mousetrap? But, like, all these games, are trying to think of different ways. Like, how could I quickly do something like that? So I'm just kind of wondering, like, is that something you guys ever thought about? Like, other than, like, Making a making a wooden box for the game, right? Because every game box gets absolutely destroyed. But like beyond beyond that, like would you, would you guys even consider doing that? Maybe not necessarily that, but something around in the same realm. Maybe not like games in general, because the only kind of games I've seen people really want to think of like special for, and this is like no shot at like the nerds of the world, but like D and D type stuff like i've I've seen that no i mean so like yeah, you got monopoly but they already kind of come with really cool metal pieces you know so i i, I don't think i don't think you can though they've actually kept their quality as far as those pieces they've done they kept pretty nice there sure um but maybe like like sorry i don't think i'd want like special pieces for that because it's like so simple 
Yeah, maybe that, be, a, maybe that was a bad example. But. Well, ri- but Risk would be cool, I think. But the problem yeah. with Risk is the pieces are so little. The yeah. details, if you're trying to make them like, or something, yeah. would be too great. Now, 3D printing, however, yeah. you can mass produce, like, your little infantrymen in Risk. First of all, those really hurt when you step on them. They're like Legos, but worse. Um, but most definitely making those to be cool. Like, But a little more detailed, maybe a little bigger. Um but no, I really ever thought about making them. Maybe chess pieces. I think that's as far as I'd go. It's probably chess pieces. So yes, I've, I've thought about it myself. Um, just so have a quality board, have a quality you know game, right? Some like I was saying, Monopoly, Clue, you know the the classics, the ones that you really enjoy playing. Three D printing would probably be the basis for that. Uh, you can do different processes to make them, you know, a little bit more unique. You can design your own pieces. It really depends uh, what you want to do with them and how far you want to go. Like any any true game, it's right. Yeah, it depends, depends on the game. Because like there's a lot of games out there, and not all of them are like the super basic, like Sorry and stuff like that. Like the really complicated ones. There's some really cool. Oh, absolutely. Like, card holders and piece holders well, and stuff like that. Monopoly is one of those games I think that people have like kind of gone pretty crazy for, as far as making like a full board with oh, yeah. the drawers and the money and all that stuff, which I thought was pretty. Oh, cool. Oh, sure. <laughs> there's uh, I can't think of what the name is called, but it's a process of taking. Uh, metal and layering it over another uh, piece. Um, you usually put it in a vat. You use uh, electricity to to do it. Um, yeah, I can't oh. think of. It. I could see it. I can. I like, know it's oh, the ionization. ionization. It's, um, like yeah. Static something. You, you pretty much take. <laughs> yeah. You take it. Dip it in this. You take like a metallic, a three D printed material. Electroplating. Yes. Okay. That okay. is cool. So I've I've seen people 3D print stuff and electroplate it into metal. Um, and you could you do like the little metal pieces that you decide to um, incorporate into a game like that. You could take that and do that process. And now you have those metal pieces. Um, I actually have two versions of Risk. I really like playing Risk, when, especially when a lot of people get together. Um, I know it's a long game, but I really love that game. And my grandfather gave me the like the... 50th 75th 100th whatever anniversary edition and there are metal pieces in that game but then again i have a uh game of thrones version of risk that are you know pretty hard plastic they're the quality you know pieces themselves but like there's a difference in those metal pieces like when you pick up the you know the other edition and play with those they're hefty like you know you're playing with some high quality stuff well, some legit oh, stuff. so and some risk <laughs> Damn. Oh, oh. Tim, do you play Risk? Uh, ages ago. Like, I think I played it twice in my life. <laughs> okay. Maybe we should bring it to uh, Workbench Con and just have, too. like, yes. Yes, the two. It's like Settlers of Catan. That was a good one. Like, I, but there's, like, a lot of, like, easy to make pieces in that. Can yeah. Shoot some ladders. No. My kids do. <laughs> apples to apples. <laughs> And whoop, whoop their butts and shoot some ladders. I never see it coming. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I see where you're going with that, and I absolutely would like to do that myself. Um, obviously, I don't think we'd ever get paid enough for them. Honest. Well, that's just, that's not... where the production side comes in. Like, can't, you know, the, the, that's yeah. the rhetorical question. It's like, is there something like that where you can, if do... you lasered the board and you did 3D printing pieces? The money would probably be something similar or the same. And then, like, all the pieces were 3D printed. Yes, you could probably do it. You'd probably get away, you know, making something decent. Have the board be the box. So, like, sure. you have, like, you know, one container and do it that way. Yeah, you could probably get away with doing that. Um, but still, I, I just, you would have to find the market, the gaming market. So. All right. Like you, you play D and D, right, Tim? Oh yeah. Like, okay. Um, Nap. I don't know if you've ever played. I played once before uh, when I was on helicopters. I don't know why that community <laughs> loves that game. It's kind of weird. Awesome. Anyway, yeah. It, well, yeah. It's just the community that I'm talking about. Yeah. You wouldn't put the two and two together. D and D, I'm fine with. Like D and D, I'm fine with. Like I think the idea if it's really cool, but helicopter. What? 
Yeah, my like my entire crew was like all about it, and they're like, "You're gonna play," and I'm like, "I don't know how to play." Anyway, I I enjoyed it. In fact, I was talking about uh, getting a um I don't know what you call it, a group together here. Um, I don't want <laughs> you don't nerds want to uh, play. Eh, yeah, pretty much. I, I wear um, the nerd badge with pride, absolute pride. <laughs> but anyway, we're 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 getting into a rabbit hole there. Um. But almost like if you've done it before and have experience, and I think it's called not is a DM not DMing. Um, what's what's the lead person called? Yeah, DM. Oh, Dungeon Master. DM. Dungeon Master, yes, a DM. Um, so if you know how to do that and you could spin some great tale, <laughs> tales, and you would work, you could do in three D print. You could do little kits like beginner kits, and then oh, send yeah. those out. The dwarves were digging a hole, diggy diggy hole. But like uh, I know one of the okay, mods. Nap is not allowed. I don't remember the name of the mod, but like in that mod, like you, like the party sort of acquires this building called Troll, Troll Skull Manor or something like that. And so I looked this up online, and people are actually making like three D versions like of this building. Yeah, so that they can people... like move around, and they're like that. Like and the detail in this is amazing. But to your question, they're before, making shit. Are they making money on it? Everything. Hell no. <laughs> Unless they turn around and sell well, that thing for like four figures, it ain't happening. <laughs> gaming tables. You can oh, make yeah. gaming tables. Dude, look up, guy look here. up look up Wormwood. <laughs> the they sell their gaming tables for like five figures. Like I mean these are legit gaming tables. Well, the guy I know sells them for like ten, ten thousand, but uh yeah, Crema, that's what I'm saying. Crema design, Crema <laughs> design, oh yeah, five, so Crema designs here, he actually makes them and ships them. He actually hand delivers them. Yeah, that's cool. Them. That's awesome. We used well, to have a guy local here grand, that sold them. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, look at Wormwood. W Y R M Wood. Wormwood game tables or something like that. But if you know anything about that, like uh, I don't want to say like the nerd realm because that's kind of not right. But like if you know about like those gaming sessions and whatnot, um, people pay a lot of money for their stuff. Mm-hmm. They they take a lot of pride into you know they get really into it. It's almost like they're woodworking. Um, so, I mean, like that's, that's a great realm to dive into if you're, you know, kind of leading from that game section. Um, even like, uh, like you gotta be careful with this, like even like the Wonder Woman statue, you gotta kind of be careful with how oh, that yeah. is. Like I said, you gotta call it something else. That's like super gal. <laughs> super dressed up gal. There you go. It's gold cool. woman. Designed. Hey, Victor. But yeah, I mean, like, yeah, there's there's a ton of things I would like to try to get into and uh, try to make, and I'm hoping that this will open me up a little bit more to being able to do that, um, and then even doing some of my own furniture. I mean, like, th- there's some things around the house I'd like to knock out and do, and this will give me that time. That took a little longer to explain than I thought, but there's so much we could do, and that's what I like about it. It's like we can make anything. Well, anything is subjective, but. Yes. No, I, I honestly think you can make pretty much anything. Josh, make a things. car. I, I don't think I just want, ever want to make certain things. I'm not, I'll make you a car. It's not going to be running. It'll be a, a scale model, though. Right on. I just <laughs> let me get the file. Throw it on the 3D printer. There you go. <laughs> zoom, zoom. <laughs> That's the right answer. So, well, gents, if you want to go and put a bow on this, let's uh, go ahead and do that, starting off with nap. I'm going to take a nap because I'm tired. Uh, no, I'll call you sleepy in a minute. I ain't, lie, there, guy. I ain't gonna lie, guys. I'm a little tired today. Today was very emotionally exhausting for me today. Um, it's just been me, so I've been dealing with everything. Like typically, but hey, take care of this. Like my some of my people, so I've been pretty tired taking care of people and whatnot. I had someone reach out to me from our record chat about uh, CNC stuff today, uh, and it just kind of reminded me why I'm a part of the community. It's kind of nice to be able to help somebody, even if it only took me a few minutes of my day to do it. It was just like. Oh yeah, totally, dude. Like, what do you got? And he asked me a couple questions, and then completely satisfied with, you know, the answers he got. And he's going to press on with what you know, uh, what information he received. And if he gets uh, a Shapoka four, awesome. Uh, if he gets a uh, one finity, maybe okay, even better. Um, but he is better informed now, and I'm hoping uh, whatever decision he makes, uh, he's happy with it. And then also, I'm also there to help with Shapoka things because I know Shapoka things, and so does Tim. Because he has right. <laughs> so anybody, yeah. Back but, in the day, he actually helped me out of a jail. <laughs> yeah. So, at the end of the day, we're always here to help you, and uh, just continue to keep helping others. 
uh, as we help you. And uh, it'll just keep think- making things better and better as we go. So on that, y'all have a great night. And I'll send it over to Tim. Thanks for joining us, folks. This is seriously 202 episodes. And I'm still around. The guys still want me. And I'm still learning. And it's been an absolute fantastic ride. I'm looking forward to more. I am not doing as much as I could be, but being a part of this, having you guys in the community definitely keeps me driving forward to try new things and keep making and not give up. So thank you to both of you guys and thank you to the community. Keep making stuff. Keep making that sawdust. That gosh darn lovely sawdust. Josh. It's not lovely. Yes, it is. It's man glitter. It's Don't a take silent that killer. Away from me. Okay, it's the man. It's, <laughs> it's the man silent glitter. killer. It's the man glitter that kills you. <laughs> On that, oh, you know, kidding aside, go make some sawdust. Be safe. You know, wear masks. Use your, you know, dust protection. You know, try to try to be safe in the shop. It's very easy to not be because you know PPE and masks and stuff like that. It's not comfortable. You know, no one truly enjoys wearing them. Um, But at the end of the day, you'd rather be wearing a mask and be able to breathe when you're older than, you know, die because you can't breathe. So that kind of got dark there real quick. With that, let's line this up. (laughs) I got the fuck from that. (laughs) Um, Hey, get in the shop. Make some sawdust. Have a good time. You know, bring your kids in there. Teach them what you know. Pass on the gift of knowledge. And, uh, you know. If you're not enjoying it, try something a little bit new. Woodworking has many aspects to it, and you don't have to be sticking to one. Like, try something different. Um, Go three degrees to the left or right, find your path, and continue to go. So with that, you have a great night, day, evening, whatever you're at. And uh, go make some sawdust. Sawdust Nation podcast out. out.